beloved one i hope you are doing well i want us to take a short reading from the book of psalms chapter 127 it says if god's grace doesn't help the builders they will labor in vain to build a house if god's mercy doesn't protect the city all the centuries will circle it in vain it's really a senseless to work so hard from morning till late at night toiling to make a living for fear of not having enough now god can provide i want you to see this it says god can provide for his devoted lovers even while they sleep now this tells us of the great things that we enjoy anytime we come into God's presence. It tells us of the blessings we enjoy anytime we are with God. And then we can do this through prayer, through the Word of God, and even as we are about listening to this. So I want us to do something. We are going to like this video. So then please hit on the like button if you have not done so. This helps YouTube recommend this video out there to anyone so everyone can have access to it also by doing this you help in the spread of the gospel and of the good work of this channel then don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section hit on that subscribe button if you haven't done so and you are new here and then get on to the notification bell and do us the favor of tapping on it too you were blessed son. comes to jesus and says good master I've heard you talk about eternal life. I've heard you talk about life and I desire to enter into that dimension. And then he said, what do I need to do? And Jesus gave him a set of instructions. And he said, no, if it's this, I have kept it. But I perceive that I lack something. And Jesus told him one thing that he lacked. He said, with all that you have done, there were only things that affected the external part of you. He says, go, sell your possession. If he said, keep the money, the man would do it. Sell your possession, then give away the entire money. When you are left with nothing, come back to me. And the man said, no, I can't follow you with nothing. Now listen, 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 listen. He's telling him something here that is our message for tonight. Sell all, not some. He didn't say give all. Pay the price. Look for customers. Sell it. Gather the money. Place so much value on the money. Then give it away. And when you are empty and left with nothing, come and follow me. The Bible says the man left sorrowful. How do I start selling my reputation? How do I start selling my ambition? How do I start selling my track record? How do I start selling my gifts? I give them all away. When I'm left with nothing, I come to... What if I don't find you there? That's a risk. These are the support systems. My self-worth is predicated upon these things. Now you ask me to take away every support structure. When I am left without a system of support, I come. He says, that's the one thing you have lacked. This is the reason why you have not entered into life. You have done this. You have done that. But you've only done those things on the strength of a God called your possession. Because you have something to fall back on. Listen carefully. If God fails, you know your business will not fail. At least you will get customers. If he refuses to answer your prayer, your business can answer your prayer. While you find out why he's not answering. If God does not open a way, your gifts can open a way. So those support structures, he's speaking to a man. He says, there's one thing you lack. That all of these things you are doing, you have not yet come to a point of total surrender. Listen, there is only one point I want to advertise tonight. The price for all of God is all of you. The price for all of God is all of you. The price for all of God is not your mind. 
is not your seed. The price for God, everything that can be him within you must go. The price for all of God. A young man who worked very diligently was not a thief, was not um, all of those sins. And then he comes to stand and says, good master, what is left? What have I not done? Good master, I'm a prayer warrior. Listen carefully. Good master, I'm a fasting giant. Good master, I'm a responsible gentleman. Good master, I'm a man of God. I heard that you called me and I, I, I have not rebelled at the call. But why are things not working? What one thing do I lack? How many things? One thing. One thing. And he told him, I know. I look at you and I see your degrees. I look at you and I see your business. I look at you and I see your gifts. And while it is true that you thank me in the midst of them, the proof that you can thank me is to thank me without them. It is easy to thank God in the midst of his faithfulness. But when you can thank him outside of his faithfulness, the, the, the purity of your worship, the purity of your pursuit is tested outside of everything that you have. It makes no sense to not love God when you are blessed. It makes no sense to not love God when things are working. But he says, go, take your possession. Now, if he said, give it away, you still have something to gain, a good name. So you still have something to protect. If, if I give this lady five naira, I give this one ten naira, even if I'm left with nothing, I secured a good reputation. But he says, go and sell it. So that the people who buy it know that it's not a gift. Then carry the money. Give to the poor who do not have a reputation to advertise you. And then when you are left alone feeling stupid, come to me. That is the one thing you have lacked. Please hear me believers. There is one thing that our generation continues to lack. The truth is that God has helped us in the area of prayer, in the area of the word there. There has gradually been a sense of seriousness with God, an awakening. And so we love God in the midst of all of this. But we must get to a point where we allow him to test our love when we are left alone. Let me see your worship when you lose your job. Not when you don't have a job. When you don't have a job, you don't have an experience upon which your ego is resting on. But when you lose it, see, it is better to not have something. That innocence, you are innocent. But when you have it, you have added it to your support structures. And God says, lose it. That in this kingdom, we gain things by losing them. That anything you do not lose is not truly yours. The condition to have things is to lose them. You gain a reputation by losing it. You make a name by becoming of no reputation. Look at what, Je understand what Jesus is telling him here. He's saying your confidence, rich man, is not, you are a good man. But I see that there is one thing you lack. I look at you and there are strings connected to your wealth, connected to your abundance, connected to everything. Cut those strings away and stand alone, willing to love me, willing to serve me, whether or not. You see, let me tell you this. There is no disappointment when there is no expectation. Disappointment only comes when there is an expectation that has not been met. I don't expect this guy to hold my mic for me. So if I pass him and he does not hold, I'm not disappointed. But if I expect you to hold my mic and you don't, are we together now? While it is true 
that God blesses. Listen, please. Listen, please. True love can never be a reward. If I love God because, if I love God for, if I love God towards, the moment there is a condition, that is not true love. True love can never be a reward. Because whatever is the object, the defining factor, it can fail. I love God because he prospers. Dangerous reason to love God. I love God because he anoints. I love God because he never fails. They look spiritual, but they are dangerous reasons. If you love me because you like my smile, what happens the day I'm angry? Are, are you seeing that now? You're already in trouble because the love was tied to something. So he says, cut those strings away. It is good to celebrate him and say, Lord, look at what you have done in my life. But you should be able to say, Lord, look at what you have not done. And yet I love you in the midst of it. Go and sell everything that you have. Sell your reputation. Notice how God made men in the Bible. Every time he came to them, he always will ask them to do something that left them alone. Take now thy son, thine only son whom thou lovest. Only son, the one you love. Forget Ishmael, you don't love him. Take the one you love. Go and offer him upon a mount that I will show you. And Abraham became the father of faith. When Jesus himself was going to come to the earth, the father said, if you must come and die, strip yourself of the glory. You are not going to come with it. You will come and learn obedience because you want to gain a name. So you must lose something. Please understand what I'm teaching you tonight. I show you the reason why many people never secure the attention of God. I show you the reason why many spiritual activities will continue to be a compendium of frustration. I show you why we dissipate spiritual energy in supposed spiritual things and we truly do not have results for it. The reason is because while we do those things, the truth is there is plan B. The plan B is very diplomatic when matters go bad. We can outsource plan. The jealousy of God does not allow you to have plan B. It is either you, O oh God, or I perish. It is either you lift me or I perish. Are you getting what I'm saying now? The Bible says the man left sorrowful. Sorrowful. Because he had great possessions. I would sell this. I stand before the God of heaven and I tell you, I will drop this mic and never pick it again. Love. In the midst of plenty or outside of plenty, unchanged. Passion. In the midst of results or outside of results doesn't make any difference. Oh God, why didn't you heal my mother? Are you really God? And he is looking at you. My CGPA, Lord, I gave my tithe. I'm a tither. And I even gave a seed to, to every man of God that I love. Yet things have not changed. Where are you, oh God? Take away shame from me. Don't let people laugh at me. And God says, that's it. People laugh at you. That's, that's really the object. When you get to a point where it no longer matters. Why will you take the shame when you claim you are not taking the glory? Whoever takes the glory should take the shame. So if I claim he is taking the glory and yet I am so shame conscious, something is not adding up. 
why is your reputation such an issue please listen to what i'm telling you i show you a secret to becoming the friend of god it is more than fasting it is more than prayer it is more than bible study it is coming to a point in your life where you are willing to lose any and everything and yet your passion for him is unchanged thank you because the job comes but if it never comes leaving you is not an option thank you because i know you will heal my body but even if i die the last word that will come out is you are faithful come on now our world especially our generation is full of interests there is hardly the purity of selflessness what is in it for me you are my friend because are we together i found out you are you know a lot of people and so i've seen that there is an advantage in being your friend provided i can see what i can gain from you it's amazing how that our pursuits as spiritualist as it is has already been corrupted by the versatility of the lost tied to it and so we go for seven days dry what are you looking for lord what did you give apostle you will give me and god starts asking why from the one you never answer just send it oh god why why do you want the power i know why because you saw a protocol standing close to a man come it looked good to have people stand i mean this huge guy it looked good to be a celebrity and you just found out that since i'm not an unbeliever let me use god to achieve the same result what is in it for me the language of our generation what is in it for me what do i stand to gain show me my court first and so we carry that bargaining mindset and go to god and say lord i want to serve you but first oh let's define it am i going to shine if yes more than who mention the people who will clap for me while i serve you because there are people i need to prove a point to will they be part of them and while that is happening we have the energy to dissipate but the loss will never allow God to be glorified. Sell all you have. Take it away from yourself. Be dissociated from it. Don't go and store it. Every time in the Bible, a man built a monument and secured his life upon it, God called him a fool. There was once upon a time a rich man who built barns and put a lot of plenty. Please don't get me wrong. If you think God is not a giver, I will show you that there is a name. The, the giving of God cannot be really received by any man. We don't have what it takes to receive all that he wants to give. So this is by no means promoting a life of mediocrity and failure. Look at those who gave him all. Every time people meet me, the number one prayer is a possible a double portion. And, and there's nothing wrong with that necessarily. I'm sure it comes from a sincere heart. Apostle, this and that. I'm sure some of you while watching Ephenathan minister in your mind, just say, I will dust that voice training again. I mean, if this is what it takes, I will go back. And, and you can discern the corruption. Let me tell you this, my brothers and my sisters. God is not a fool. He is the fountain of wisdom. He must vet the purity of your motive regardless of the accuracy of the activities. While you are doing those spiritual activities, the eye that can penetrate and cut asunder the bones and the marrows, he's watching to see. Can I trust you? If this is his phone, 
he should be able to collect it without me feeling offended when i claim this is your phone and collecting it becomes a problem then something is happening i have taught again and again that owners are rebels in this kingdom in this kingdom we don't own things when you own anything you are a rebel we are stewards the bible says and it says moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful the reputation his own the glory his own the fame the lifting are we together john chapter 3 and then verse 29 and 30 something happened in the bible i hope you know that most of the disciples of john became the disciples of jesus the disciples of jesus were formally mentored by john your joy should be when they say we now declare you husband and wife but you are angry that your friend is about to rejoice something is wrong decreasing does not mean go down decreasing means that i shrink to a point that i am now in him that when they look at me you know the word decrease there for many of us it, we think is a bad word because we mean get out of the show that's truly what it means but then the advantage is that by the time you decrease god himself will find a way of ensuring that while they focus on him they still see you are we together now i must decrease this is please give us that scripture let me enjoy my shining then i come to you now many of us came here tonight to receive power wonderful to receive miracles wonderful to be inspired wonderful but tonight God is searching for those who say these are my reasons oh God but even if the reasons are never met I am still here ah, I'm still here I'm still here I thought the breakthrough would have come by January it didn't come but I'm still here Lord I'm not going anywhere to whom shall we go you alone have the words of life I don't have an option I did not bring plan B when I started with you it is you or I perish these are the kinds of people that it will be as though God owes them his presence they will call upon him and he will arise he will adorn their lives with beauty and glory that will cause even them to wonder praise the Lord good master what is the one thing that is left you can fast the more it's excellent you can pray the more excellent you can do all of the things you have to do the more but my brothers and my sisters let me tell you this please hear me none of these things will replace the place of genuine death and dissociation from things when honor and shame does not mean anything to you when poverty and wealth does not mean anything to you when the applauds of men or the mockings of men does not mean anything to you when all that matters in your life is christ and christ alone you are a dangerous man on the earth you are the kind of person that satan cannot do anything about it is never about accolades so when God sees that your pursuit is tied to those things, he will give you the same instruction he gave the man. Go. Sell that which gives you a sense of significance when you are left alone. Come back to me. Many people never come back. They never come back. They leave and they go to look for options but like the one leper who was healed there are others who will come back and say master it's all gone the reputation is gone i am willing if need be to trade everything away 
I stand before you only depending on your grace and your power and your light. If you do not help me, I cannot rise. Whatever you don't give me, I cannot have. If you don't give me a song, I cannot sing. If you don't open my eyes, I cannot see. And God says, do I mean that much to you? He said, Lord, let time prove it. Time prove it. Lord, I need a child greatly, but if a child does not come, you are still God. A time will come when your prayer life has no prayer points again. Not because you do not want to pray. You are more concerned about your love for him than your needs being met. That you can go before him and for hours never talk about yourself. It becomes all about him. Lord, I thank you. If you never bless me, you are still God. If you never open a door for me, you are still God. Please listen to what I tell you most people continue to use god as a ladder you were told he's a reliable ladder to achieve greatness you were told he's a reliable ladder to achieve fame you are told he's a reliable ladder to marry a reliable ladder to get a good husband a good wife a reliable ladder to get promotion a reliable ladder to get these things and you are right he is except that that's not all he is The Lord put it very strongly in my heart to challenge us tonight. You will waste your fasting. You will waste your prayer. You will waste your Bible study. You will waste your going to church. You will waste your going, your praying in tongues until your heart becomes like the alabaster box that you carry your entire reputation and put it in that jar and take it to him and not pour small and keep some for later the bible says she broke it no hope of recovery broke it and the entire perfume filled that room and hear what the disciples who were there for reasons that they explained later on what is our court in this following you they were angry and they said madam you are wasting this before him and then they said you would have given it to the poor. Now lay it all down again. To hear you say that I'm your friend. Help me find a way. Bring me back to you Yeah You're all I want You're all I am you cannot give God is what you must sell tonight the one thing I can give God everything except my job I can give God everything except my husband I can give God everything except my anointing I can give God everything except my ministry I can give God everything except my bank account ah no not 2019 not my bank account I can give God everything except my CGPA I can give God everything except my self-worth. It took me so long to build this. He had great possession. He said, go and sell it. Until you have nothing, come to me. Follow me. Follow me. Please hear me. Nobody follows God full he will empty you on that journey no matter how you start he will empty you he will empty you of your reputation 
he will empty you of your intelligence he will bring you to a point where in your world there is only one name jesus there is only one destiny god he becomes alpha he becomes omega that everything around your life will revolve around him most of the sicknesses we have in the world today are caused because we have not laid down everything i bought a car i'm afraid they may steal it i worry myself to depression because i think my car of 10 20 30 40 50 million i have a business and i'm not going to let anybody cheat me it's my sweat and so i wake up while the keeper of israel is still awake too and i depress myself to sleep my ministry must move forward whether god gives me a song or not i must compose one by myself and you join things that you waste money and go to the studio and nobody celebrates it i can tell you where our frustrations come from they come from the lusts that are connected to our pursuits even our pursuits of god there is a loss connected to it and so when it is not satisfied the lifespan of our passion diminishes completely people send me a text uh, send me text messages all the time and sometimes they say apostle since god hears you talk to him this thing if it does not work whatever he sees he should take it on the throne I got to a point in my life where I said, Lord, I thank you for what you have made me represent to a generation. But I mean it and I mean it from the depth of my heart. That God alone is worth my life. No, not fame. Joshua Selman is only a man. A man that God has helped when your reputation becomes bigger than your promoting him when your business becomes greater than your pro when you are afraid of decreasing because you suspect that the honor will diminish you suspect that the applause will diminish then it will but when he is lifted and i if i be lifted up from the earth this piece of earth not real estate if i be lifted up that if you project men that when they see you they see him i should be able to look at you and see christ and say look at what god can do with a man not look at what man is doing with god look at what god can do with a man these are the kinds of states that will make god swear over your life that you will never go down for, for no reason you will see God continue to lift you and even you will try to find a reason and say Lord God will take someone's prayer request and give it to you as a gift while someone is laboring on one side your passion becomes a system of attraction I've pledged and I've vowed in my life that anything that will ever come into this life that cannot be taken back by God should never come never never and i mean it from the depth of my heart even as i'm standing here i'm telling him again and he's hearing it if this supposed reputation all of these mundane things that continue to destroy our lives please hear me my brothers and my sisters indoctrinate yourself into prioritizing god more than any other thing otherwise you will make a fool out of your life this lifetime is too small to be foolish you must know what matters in the beginning god in the beginning god in the beginning god and at the end of it it must be god too alpha omega is god helping us tonight that's why when when minister effort was ministering 
I just I was my, I was praying in my heart and said Lord let 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 this open up our hearts and our lusts. you see when God comes one of the things that he does is to expose you to you he will show you the truth you will then see your lusts and your vulnerabilities not to condemn you but to let you know that listen listen the object behind this your spirituality is a corrupted motive it's not all of me I love him. I truly do. I love him. But he will ask you more than what? More than what? I love you more than what? And whatever you say you love him more than, he will test it. He really will. It's an uncomfortable truth, but he will test it until he finds himself tonight's message is very simple it's a call a call to a deeper dimension a call to dissociate yourself from all the things that we build our reputation over when he becomes the only object of your focus then sit back and watch lifting that you have never seen sit back and watch the power of God upon your life in a way and manner that will scare you sit back and watch your life mentor generations when he finds you when God searches for a man he's not searching for a body he's searching for your heart my son give me your heart the epicenter where you store those desires give it to me from beginning to the end it will always be it's always been you Jesus oh Jesus nothing else matters nothing in this world will do it's not a song it's a confession that Jesus you're the center and everything falls around you Jesus this must be the anthem of a generation so from my heart to the heavens Jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about you from my heart to the all about you yes it's all about you tonight i want you to bring out your alabaster box take your reputation and pour it like an offering into that box take your job that is the basis for your no time no time pour it in that alabaster box also add your pain anything is allowed to enter take your sickness take the source of your discomfort turn everything into that alabaster box and bring it before his feet and break both the crowns and the thorns break it before his feet and tell him this is all about you I continue to search my life every time to be sure nothing under any condition has been able to gain his place in my life and, and I mean what I'm saying please I want you to I want you to discern the truthfulness from whence I'm communicating this this is not just a sermon it's a call it's a call God is waking us up to say yes be careful be careful your prayer request continue to increase and your passion decreases god give me this god make me this i must have this i've had this one add this for me and god is saying look there must come a time in your life when you throw your prayer request and say lord where are you where are you give me you everything else can wait Give me you, 
I hope I'm not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. And while you are singing that, a text just comes. Sorry, you were not given the job. And you add that text into the alabaster box. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hand, if it's not by your spirit, don't let me have it. For everything I need, truly, if it's not in your presence, let men talk they will talk anyway if it's not by your hand and if it's not by your spirit don't let me have it for everything i need is in you and then the medical report comes you just lost the baby madam you thought the 11th pregnancy will be the last one. You had a vision that it became a baby. And now the pregnancy is lost. And you're standing there wondering what to do. They've prophesied. They've said this. Lord, where are you? Ah. Come and make my heart your home come and be everything i am and all i know here's the prayer listen search me through and through till my heart becomes a home for you there's no space in my heart to keep a car there's no space in my house to keep money, dollars, pounds. There's no space in my heart. My heart is too fragile for those objects. There's no space in my heart to keep ego. It was designed to carry the weight and the size of God. Tonight we are going to take a lot of things out. A lot of things. If I taught us the song already, let every other name fade away. Hold on. Do you know your car has a name? Both the one you bought and the one you are looking at, there is a name to it. I hope you know that the bank account you want or have has a name. When you say let every other name, don't think demons this night. Just, just leave them tomorrow is their day but this night let every other name may be the name of a beautiful lady who can even be here listen let every other name can be the name of an area where you must build a house if not I die let every other name can be the name of a wevon that must must be upon your head so when you say let every other name fade away you are not saying it should leave you you are saying I, I want my focus to be directed on just one person one person why will I look at you dear Lord and look at something else why will I talk to two things at the same time I'm talking to you and talking to my car I'm talking to you and talking to my ego you want my undivided attention your jealousy will not allow me to be that distracted it is either you or nothing else let every other name fade away ah. let every other name fade away till there's only you Jesus. 
Jesus, take your place. Jesus, take your place. Sing it one more time from the depth of your heart. Let every other name fade away. Let every other name fade away. Till there's only you. Let every other name fade away. Listen, my brothers and my sisters, in your mind tonight, you're going to carry your ATM and put it on the ground. Carry your CGPA, your results, place it on the ground. Like the 20 and 4 elders, you will take your golden crown. I know you just got promoted, but it must touch the ground. If your promotion cannot touch the ground, then it should be on a throne. Because that is your God. It is either on the throne or on the ground. When it comes to worship, nothing else. There, there are no two sides. The elders don't just remove their crown, they cast it. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. I am undone before now let me share with you a mystery as we round up everything that you put on the ground the moment you start worshipping it grows too there is nothing that is on the ground that was a representation of your worth and your value that remains the same when you drop your bank account while you worship it grows when they brought the rod of Aaron and they kept it in his presence the rod that had no root something began to happen it began to grow and bud I tell you how to fix what is not working lay it down lay it down lay it down carry your finances and lay it down Carry your past and lay it down. Carry your CGP and lay it down. Carry your ministry and lay it down. And then worship. Worship pain out of your life. Worship tears out of your life. Worship disappointment out of your life. And say, Lord, this is about you now. It is no longer about all of these things. No. I show you a secret in all your ways acknowledge him acknowledge him there is only one celebrity that stands in your room of worship the Christ himself and as you lift that incense of worship suddenly you will find out that the things you would have focused on are no longer there you have been detached now listen when do you know why you feel safe depositing your money in a bank? You're not friends with the manager. You may not even know your account officer. I will tell you why. Because of the ease of withdrawal. Say after me, ease of withdrawal. I know that if I put one million in so, so, so and so bank, even if it is 12 midnight when I come, under normal circumstances, as soon as I slot my card, it should come. So could there be a reason why it is difficult for God to reach down to you? Because you have not become like that ATM. When it is the same thing, when God is on his throne or when he's in your heart, then there is nothing, whatever is on the throne can also come to your heart. When the greatness on the throne can be safe in your heart and it all belongs to him, then let me tell you sincerely, the, the entire affluence and glory on the throne can be reproduced in your heart because either ways he still has unlimited access to it I can slot my ATM card this night and punch some amount and it comes out 
can God come to your life punch that car will it go some of you will say wrong number God says me say, I, I, I know what I'm saying put a lower figure and it will come out huh. Lord whatever I cannot give you please may it not come to my life whatever realm and dimension you will take me to that you will not be glorified may I never get there let me tell you the truth the uploads of men don't last it is too short to waste your time around it tonight many of us are like the man who came to Jesus You have done everything right it may not be that you have done everything wrong but the one thing that must happen tonight before we leave the one thing our lusts our desires they don't have to be demonic but god fights anything that takes his place even if he's the one that gave you the moment it finds its way to your heart it becomes his enemy god can give you something today and fight it tomorrow don't you think because he gave you he would not touch it he gave isaac and he called for it again and abraham took isaac and he said because you have done this i swear that in blessing i will bless you does god have the power to shut down your business does God have the power to relocate you to where he wants, not greener pastures? Does God have the power to keep you in a room for three days with no excuses? Does God have the right to cancel your ministerial schedule? Does God have the power over your account? Does God have the power over your relationship? Does God have the power over your ego and your reputation? Tonight, the part you have not given God is the part he wants this night. He doesn't want what you have given him before. He's looking for the one thing you have not given him. And I'm telling you, my brothers and my sisters, true freedom in your life will come when that happens. Are we together? We are going to pray the next five minutes and then we are done. It's going to be a prayer of surrender. Just five minutes and we're done tonight's service. We have to start tonight is a call. I don't know how you are going to pray. I don't know what position you will find, but I like us to pray and say, Lord, these lusts and these appetites must live my life this night. I'm tired of acting like it's all about you. I know, I know in truth that it's not entirely about you. It is you plus my desires. It is you plus marriage. It is you plus a job. It is you plus promotion. Tonight I want it to be you and you alone. Five minutes and we're done. Everywhere inside and outside. Cry to God. You are my God. Please pray. My hiding place, my safe refuge, my treasure, Lord, you are my friend and king, anointed one, most holy. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world? What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole wealth? What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole reputation? What shall it profit a man if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? It says, Simon Bajona, lovest thou me more than these? I know you love me more than these. Oh God, you are my God. 
and I will ever serve you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever follow. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever love you. I will seek you in the morning. I have learned to walk in your ways. It's step by step you are leading me and I will follow you all of my days. So forgive me for you alone are worthy of my praise I lay everything down oh God one minute and we're done. Let it be yours. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours. I'm yours, I'm yours, I'm yours forever. Whatever you ask of me, I surrender. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye! Pray! Pray! Pray for your destiny! The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.